All right. So, what are we talking about today? All right. So, last week uh, I did a session specifically on uh, just regular expressions generally, um, and that uh, covered really kind of talking about very quickly uh, .NET regular expressions as a group. Um, Mark edits written um, in .NET, specifically C Sharp. Um, this is true for both, uh, for all versions of the application, um, whether you're running on Linux or uh, Mac OS or Windows. The biggest difference between the different systems is how the user interface works. So obviously in the Mac OS version, it uses Object C to build the interface and all that good stuff. But the, the underlying uh, logic that works is C sharp. So uh, we spent the first session, so last week, um, talking specifically about the different parts, of the regular expression language that's in C sharp and pointed to some resources that you could use um, if you wanted to uh, do some additional investigation um, or understanding about how the, the language worked. As a reminder, uh, these are the, the references. Um, so there were two specifically um, that I had pointed out. Uh, the first one is this one here. Uh, this is the quick reference for .NET specifically. Um, this includes all of the language elements as well as some examples on how they're structured uh, for folks who are going to be using the regular expression language often, uh, I tend to recommend downloading either the Word or the PDF version of uh, this uh, uh, page. Um, that's a quick kind of uh, pocket guide. Uh, so this is the PDF version I have printed out. I keep this um, in an area where I'm working. Um, specifically, this helps with uh, help reminding me um, what the specific parts are of the uh, language for when I'm um, not uh, remembering. Um, and so the, this is, a, I find useful. The other reference um, is called uh, uh, regstorm.net, it's a tester. So it's actually very difficult um, to find uh, regular expression testers online um, that are specific to the .NET framework. Um, they tend to be more for Perl or for uh, um, a lot of uh, web-based tools. So um, the, uh, the ability to write expressions in those tools and then bring them over to MarkEdit um, is uh, difficult uh, because there are differences between the .NET regular expression language and, and languages like in Perl and other, other resources. And so this tool actually gives you the ability to test the exact syntax that's supported in .NET and to provide options here so that um, you can uh, see how they um, change the way that the expression is, um, is processed. And if you look at the quick reference, there are ways to override the options that MarkEdit applies. MarkEdit applies options that are basically um, the, what are called cultural invariant. <clears throat> Again, what that means is that MarkEdit by default in its regular expression processing doesn't um, uh, default to the current language in your system. Um, it uses what's called a cultural invariant, which means that if you use the uh, substitutions or the shortcut keys, so the uh, slash D or digit or non-digit, you know, whether it's upper or lower case, uh, rather than it applying only to Latin based digits, so zero through nine, it would apply to um, numbers in other languages as well. Um, and I, I do that partly because um, in cataloging, we are dealing with more and more um, Unicode based content and we're seeing um, the multi-language resources being created um, also Remember, Mark edit is Mark agnostic and use beyond um, just uh, uh, organizations that rely on Mark 21. In fact, I would 
I would say at this point that roughly a third of the users don't use Mark 21. And so there are um, specific reasons for why this cultural invariant uh, nature would be um, useful. You can force it though to go back to um, supporting turning off cultural invariance. Um, patients found in the, uh, the resource here where you can set um, the uh, options uh, they're right here, set the options to disable or enable um, specific values within um, uh, your regular expression. So this gives you an option to be able to see kind of how expressions work. So those are kind of the reminders of, of what's there. What I want to talk about today um, is specifically about how <clears throat> regular expressions get um, implemented within MarkEdit. Um, and how do you decide which function to use um, when working within MarkEdit um, and doing expressions? And then I have a file, uh, it's a simple file, and we'll go through a couple of, of test um, expressions. They're going to be fairly straightforward. They're going to be things like binding, uh, adding periods to end of lines that don't have punctuation, um, just because it's conceptually um, there are some things there that it's useful. We'll, um, translate some data from upper to lower case. We'll show you how to, show you how to find um, a particular digit in an LDR and decide whether or not it's a certain element. Um, I'll probably um, do something related to um, uh, adding like a author statement to the 700 field. Um, again, taking into account punctuation, which hopefully you could get rid of, but we'll it's an example of kind of how you isolate things. And then same thing related to an expression finding um, some values missing within a URL. So um, there'll be some, some different examples. Um, some of them are um, written into the slides. Some of them I've, I've printed out a sheet of paper so that I can follow along with some, some examples that I, I wanted to follow. Um, uh, I didn't get any specific questions. Um, so if folks have come with some, we can, we can work through those towards the end. Um, if they're, there's interest in that. But uh, I wanted to basically go through a handful of, of examples. Um, I'm also going to show you um, uh, how MarkEdit tries to protect you with regular expressions, um, particularly the preconditional kind of searching um, versus the multi-line. You can do both, and I'll show you um, why the multi-line is uh, useful, um, but also how it's dangerous. Um, we'll go through that. So, so that's kind of the, the approach that I'm going to take. So MarkEdit supports regular expressions in a lot of fields. Um, this isn't a, um, a uh, uh, um, an exhaustive list because find and replace isn't in it. Um, uh, this is just um, a, a list. Uh, basically in MarkEdit, anytime you're working within the application, it used to be that you had to, the tool would require you to use some kind of special funky syntax um, to show you were using a regular expression. Um, that's gone along, uh, has disappeared. Um, now anywhere regular expressions are in use, you'll find um, a checkbox that basically says use regular expressions. So here we find it in find and replace. Um, if we go to the other global editing functions, we see them here, use regular expressions, use regular expressions. So the tool um, makes it very clear um, when regular expressions are um, an option um, and when they're, they're not um, in terms of where they're at. The only place that that's not true is in the build new field. And that's partly because this is pattern based. And so um, one of the things that the build new fields tool does is it requires patterns and those patterns pull within the individual um, data sets. So inside the build new fields, there are a specific set of um, sub functions that are available to you. So um, uh, an example of this would be like in the pattern up above here with 099 subfield A, 05 subfield A. So that pulls all of the data in the subfield A from the 050, but let's say I wanted to do something with it. So the tool provides um, a set of built-in functions and, and they're um, found um, in documentation uh, that allows you to pull um, substrings or do replacements or do regular expressions against um, the tool. So what I mean by that is let's say I wanted to take um, 
uh, I wanted to do a, I wanted to take the first three values of the 050 and I wanted to do a um, replacement on them. Uh, it would look something like this, where I would use a period to represent um, a function, uh, replace, and then I would replace, um, let's say we're doing, let's say we're doing, uh, um, uh, uh, we'll just make up so, so let's say replace um, uh, G uh, four, for, uh, or actually, let's start with anything sub so sub string. So this lets me take a subset. We're going to take zero through three. So that's the first three values of the 050 subfield A. We're going to replace anything that's G4. So the first two values, G5. Um, so that would be a general replace, or we could do a reg X and replace. Um, whatever the pattern is. So in this case, maybe we're going to do uh, uh, G, G, so lowercase, uppercase, um, four with uppercase. So the tool allows you to use, um, uh, because it's pattern-based, it's not a traditional regular expression checkbox. And so you, to understand where you can use regular expressions within the build new fields, you have to read the documentation and understand what are the substitute, what are the functions that are available to you inside of it. But um, there are uh, essentially all the stuff we're going to talk about applies within the space as well. All right. <clears throat> so, let's see where we got. All right. So Mark Edit has a lot of regular expression support. So how do you choose which function um, you're going to use uh, when you're doing um, your regular expression. So you have a question and you need to be able to answer. Um, and you're thinking that a regular expression may um, be what you need to use in order to um, answer the specific need. Well, it all has to do with scope of data. So MarkEdit treats by default um, processing at a line by line basis. So when you, for example, have a record um, mark at it unless specifically told otherwise, um, applies each expression on a particular line. And so what um, the scope is for each, and so to make life easier for you and to protect you from accidentally deleting data that you don't want and to make it easier to narrow down focus, each global editing function um, has a set of scope that allows you to see certain kinds of data. Let me just um, show you an example of what I mean here. So let's talk about scope. So the add delete function. The add delete function sees everything from the equal sign to the end of the field. It doesn't see the end of line markers, but it sees the last data that's there. And there's a reason for that. The reason for that has to do specifically with delete field functions. Um, if you wanted to delete data that um, was indicator based. So um, in order to do that, you have to be able to see the indicator data. So let's say I wanted to delete um, things in a 700 field that had an indicator one. Um, I could say seven um, XX, so I'm taking any 700 field. Now I have to remember Mark Edit can see things from the equal sign. So um, uh, I have to either um, I can start with just the indicators, but that's going to potentially hit data that maybe I don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, start from the beginning of the line equals uh, seven. And then I'm going to say um, zero through nine dot two. So that's going to take any 700 field. Um, I have the two blank values. So two blank values. And then, um, oops, I didn't want that top there. Um, and then uh, the indicator. So let's say I wanted to delete things with an indicator one, then I can put a one. And so what that's going to do is when I tell Mark Edit to use a regular expression, it's going to look for anything that's in a 700 field um, with an indicator one. And actually, I could have made this uh, simpler since I really don't need that. I could just say dot dot because I'm taking any character um, that's there. Um, and I could even make this more. Um, descriptive by saying a space because it's really two spaces. So there are a lot of different ways I could represent this. So this would be one. Um, I can set my regular expression, tell it I want to delete one indicator, and now when I go and 
delete the record, it deletes those seven hundreds that had a first indicator. So um, you can imagine that this could be used for um, and does get used quite often for deleting for for individuals that that uh, prefer not to bring fast headings into their catalog or cat headings that aren't um, subject headings that aren't LCSH. Um, they can target the second indicator in the six five X field um, and remove the data that's appropriate. And so the the regular expression in order to support that gives you the ability to see um, everything from the, the equal sign to the end of the line um, to support scope. Do that. All right, so the copy field. The copy field does two specific things, three specific things actually, now that I think about it. The copy field originally was designed to just copy data exactly as is from one place to another. Um, but that was uh, deemed to be too restrictive. There was an, a move field data value that was added. Um, that allows you to move um, uh, all of a particular field, but um, uh, specific positions. Um, again, uh, that didn't completely meet the need. And so regular expressions was added. And a regular expression in the copy field function is scoped to see the data from um, an indicator to the end of the field. So you're able to um, act upon indicator values in the copy field function. So say um, I wanted to copy the data in the 245 into a 246. Um, the 245 is not part of the values that's captured in the regular expression, nor are the two spaces um, in the mnemonic formatting. The data that's available for capture is from the period, uh, the one, the, the indicator, so the 10 and then the subfield value. So I could say <clears throat> I want to capture indicators. So dot two, so I capture the two indicators um, and then uh, subfield A does not equal um, a dollar sign. So I want to capture everything that's inside just the subfield A and then everything else for my move function. And then I could say uh, 246. The indicator values I'm going to say reset to 99 just so that we can see they've been done. Um, the dollar sign uh, 2, which captures the information in um, this value here. So again, uh, I'm assuming that you've watched the first regular expression video um, as I'm going through this. Um, uh, as we work through this, uh, that's going to be the assumption. Um, so the dollar sign two to capture this grouping element, then dollar sign three if I wanted to capture the third, but I'm going to leave everything off of that um, just so that for the example here. So this allows me to scope indicators to everything at the end. I go ahead and copy the data. The one modification gets made. You can see here, indeed, the indicator values are replaced. So the equal 99. Um, it replaces the one O, the two indicators I had captured, the subfield A gets pulled over and all the rest of the data goes. So the copy field allows you to see the data from indicators to the end uh, when you use regular expressions. Edit fields was created um, specifically to simplify um, simple replace functions. So in a replace function that uses regular expression, you always have to address um, the, uh, the field, the spaces, and the indicators. And a lot of times you just want to deal with the, um, the data that's in the subfields. So in this case, regular expressions are scoped to the first indicator forward. So the indicator, or the first subfield forward. So the, the field values and the indicator values are not available in the edit field function when using regular expressions. So again, if we looked at the same function, the same copy field function, and we did the 245, I could, um, in theory, uh, create a um, new uh, 246 um, from this, but I couldn't capture the indicator values if I wanted to bring those down because the 245 um, process in the edit field function um, doesn't see it. It only sees the data from the subfield A forward. So it's been created specifically to simplify 
um, and limit the scope of the data that's being applied to, uh, but uh, that challenges it. So let me just uh, subfield slash subfield A. We can uh, dollar sign one, replace it like that, and when we run the replacement, we see that the the data keeps the indicators because the indicators weren't part of the expression because they're not in scope. Um, we see the subfield A, which is the first group and didn't print the second group. So the data in the back end gets deleted. So the tool um, doesn't uh, see the indicators. Um, like I said, I could have, um, I could create a new field um, by doing slash n equals 246. I would have to apply my own indicators um, indicators I put in, and then I could put um, the, uh, the data below. Something like this, um, and recreate um, something like that. So you see, I can create another field, but again, the indicators I'm responsible for putting back in, as am I responsible for the field information, because that information is out of scope within the edit field function, doesn't get captured. So you have to apply that yourself. Edit indicators does not have regular expressions because I sometimes don't know why I even keep this function there, but people keep telling me they want it. Um, I tend to do all of my indicator editing through the replace function. Um, edit subfields, um, subfield entry within uh, Mark Edit's uh, regular expression tool is limited to um, the subfield code till the next subfields put in place. Um, so I'm gonna show you what that means. So let's say the 245 again, subfield A. Uh, and let's say I wanted to um, just capture all the data and I'm gonna replace it just so you can see what, this, what, what that means. <clears throat> all right, so if I capture all the data and I wanna replace it, I'm just gonna say replace with so we can see what's actually replaced. And that way it makes it easy to see the scope. Whoops. What do I do here? Oh, whoops, wrong checkbox. All right, so what can we see here? So this is the function that's been replaced. Um, you'll notice that the subfield A is gone. So again, if we think about the scope that's been put in place for mark edits, um, replace function. The subfield character, so in this case the A, is part of the scope that's captured with the regular expression. You see that. So when I did the replace function, I deleted the subfield code because I didn't account for it. So this is what a lot of regular expressions are within mark edit, within any tool, is determining what the scope looks like and how you um, account for the data that's replaced. So let's say I wanted to um, make sure that I always capture the first subfield. So in that case, I may just do something like that. So that first value takes the first subfield, and then I can do everything beyond that. And then dollar sign one replace with. And now I recaptured the subfield because I took it in the first group and I put it back. So again, you have to keep in mind the scope of what's available. So the edit subfield function includes the, um, the, uh, the, the subfield code. I'm gonna talk about swap fields, but I'm not gonna run it because it's the regular expressions that gets used are kind of wonky. All right, so um, within the swap field function, um, regular expressions are only used as a way to determine when to, which field is the modifier. So the swap field function was designed to essentially take data from other fields and stack them together and create a new field, uh, moving subfield data from one place to another. When there are multiple fields, um, so let's say I'm, I'm moving data into a, a 500 field, and there are multiple 500 fields within the record. In order for the tool to determine which um, 500 field to swap the data to, um, unless it's assuming that it's not global to all of them, 
you can use this find function and treat it as a regular expression to help it determine which field is appropriate for moving that data onto the, uh, the tool. This is not um, a, a regular expression, though, that allows you to modify the data that's being moved into the field. Uh, the swap field tool doesn't do any data modification. It only takes data and lifts it from one subfield and moves it to another field. Um, in this case, regular expressions is only used in a, in a find context. And then finally, uh, we have find and replace. Uh, so find um, allows you to obviously uh, find data. So if I wanted to um, find all of the uh, um, the 856s that uh, had a blank value in the uh, RFT ISBN, um, I can go through here and, and use a regular expression to do that and collect the data that's there and then be able to jump to those particular um, sets. Um, and then the replace function. Uh, again, um, the replace function sees all the data in the line. So from the equal sign to the end of the line. So if I wanted to do something in the 245, I have to designate the 245. Um, four would be um, the two spaces and the indicators subfield A, everything in the first subfield A, and then everything else. And then I could do, um, put the subfield code back, or the, the field back with the indicators, um, the subfield A, and then leave off the subfield B, or whatever's following it, and do replacement there. And I can make that change. And it looks an awful lot like what I did in the edit subfield function, except I had to address the field and the indicators because the tool in scope sees all of that information. Where this is particularly useful and also can be particularly scary is the replace function can go a step farther than that. Um, the multi-line evaluation allows you to shift the scope of um, the application from a scope of by line to a scope of record. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say I do something like this, equals 245 uh, dot star uh, to the end. So I'm going to take the whole line, and I'm going to replace it with nothing. Let's just do that, replace it with nothing. So we look at the thing. Um, that first line goes away. So it deletes the, the line there. And it leaves the, all right, so let me do that. So, Let's see what happens if you turn on the multi-line. Deletes everything after the 245. So when you turn the multi-line evaluation off, it changes the scope of what's being um, assessed. And that changes the way that a caret and a dollar sign or the slash A slash Z substitutions, um, start of line, end of line, are applied. Um, when you change it to multi-line, the scope becomes the beginning of the record to the end of the record, whereas when it's not multi-line, the scope is um, the beginning of the field um, to the end of the field. And so uh, you have to be very careful when using the multi-line evaluation, obviously. So in this case, I did a, a search and I may have thought that I was just deleting the 245, but with the multi-line evaluation, I deleted everything after the 245 because end of, line, end, of, end of line marker said that the end of the line was the end of the record. And so I ate a lot more data than I probably meant to. And this is where it gets tricky um, when you start using the multi-line evaluation tool. It's really, really handy um, in some cases. So the multi-line evaluation tool would allow me to create a regular expression that evaluated data in the 001, the 0052, the 245, uh, the 255, and the 700 all at one time, and then did a replacement um, against some or all of those fields. Again, all at the same time. But um, because I'm pulling those records apart in groups, I had better put them all back because the tool will remove anything that I don't put back. I am responsible when I use the multi-line evaluation to 
put the data back that I've captured. And if I don't, it will delete the stuff from the record because that's how the regular expression works. So um, the multi-line evaluation tool is super handy, super cool. It makes the regular, it makes the replace function the most powerful regular expression function in the application because the scope is the entire record, but it makes it where it's also the most dangerous function because um, it's really easy to delete data from your records and not notice it. All right, so scope. Uh, so let's see here. So uh, mark edit. So um, just really quickly. So again, assuming you take it, you've looked at the first um, uh, session. Um, Microsoft regular expression language has a number of concepts. Um, the most important ones that we work with in mark edit on a regular basis that you will see over and over and over and over again within the examples um, inside of the, uh, the, the listserv when you ask the listserv for, for questions um, that will get applied um, are the character escapes, particularly the slash D, lowercase and uppercase, lowercase being digits, uppercase being non-digits, slash W, lowercase being word characters, uppercase being non-word characters, slash R, um, um, a uh, character return, um, slash N, a new line, um, and slash dollar sign, which is an actual dollar sign, um, a literal dollar sign. Uh, seen in the character classes, the groupings, the two brackets, or the bracket with the caret, meaning um, does not match, um, the grouping elements, the two parentheses, um, the anchors, uh, the caret or the dollar sign um, in an anchor capacity. You will probably see if you find them from me where uh, I've written them where I'm starting to use the substitutions, the backslash A, backslash Z, um, to stand in for the anchors, partly so that it's easier to tell when looking at a regular expression if the, uh, the caret and the dollar sign are being used for the purposes of an anchor. Um, qualifiers, the asterisk, the question mark, the plus sign, the um, uh, number of uh, matches, and, uh, a range of matches, those are used often. And in fact, in the quick examples I've been showing, I use the, the uh, match a specific number of characters often because I want to limit the scope to, for example, matching a, um, a set of uh, values in uh, matching a set of values, um, particularly to um, uh, the, the format, the mnemonic format, rather than dealing with um, uh, really greedy matches, and then substitutions being the dollar sign and the number of the group that they represent um, that's been captured up above. Uh, again, assuming that you've watched the, the first um, uh, video, uh, this stuff should make more, should make sense. So I'm going to look at a couple of examples, um, some simple examples, and then um, uh, we'll take some questions. So, all right, so here's my uh, uh, page here. So let's say um, uh, a common question that shows up um, on the market at listserv, um, although hopefully this will show up less often given that uh, ISBD punctuation is becoming less important, would be for the purposes of consistency, um, I have uh, values that uh, are missing a period and I want to put one there um, if they don't exist. However, I have um, values in my record that do have punctuation. So in this case, period, question mark, exclamation point, dashes, blah, blah, blah. So I have lots of different potential punctuation options um, and I want to be able to isolate just the particular fields um, that are missing uh, that particular punctuation value. So there are a couple ways, different places I could do that with. So the first thing I need to ask myself is what's the scope? Um, there are two different places where this probably makes the most sense. Um, one would be the, either the edit field function or one would be the replace function. Um, by and large, I tend to use the replace function, but let's go ahead and do both. So edit field function. So this allows me to isolate the data just to the 500 field. Um, essentially, I'm capturing all of the data in the 500 field. Um, and then I'm going to look for at the end of a record um, data that doesn't have um, a, a non-word character uh, at the end. So um, I want to capture um, things that don't end in a 
a non-word character. So that would be a period, exclamation point, question mark, blah, blah, blah. And then the reason I use the substitution character here is because I don't want to have to create a range of all of the potential punctuation marks that could end the, that could be at the end of my record. Um, I want to just use something that stands in for all of them, regardless of what language I'm working with. Check my regular expression, um, dollar sign one, which is the grouping. And then um, let's say I put a period at the end because that's what I want at the end. So I run my, my thing, I get two modifications. That's what I would expect. Um, and it shows up here and it shows up here, the two places that didn't have periods before. It doesn't double um, punctuate the values that had punctuation. So again, um, the expression is pretty straightforward. Um, I use um, essentially a couple of very specific concepts. One is the, the um, any character and match lots of characters. So I use a very greedy match. Um, and then I use an anchor at the end. And this anchor could be either the dollar sign or slash C. An anchor at the end to um, put an, an, an ending on the essentially the greediness. And then I put a value before the anchor to basically say what's um, the value that's required before the anchor gets hit. And so that puts some context to that dot star, that dot asterisk, that greedy match. Because those greedy matches, the way regular expression works, is it's going to match everything until the match doesn't happen. And so without that anchor at the end, the tool actually wouldn't work. The, the expression actually wouldn't work. So I'll show you what I mean. Without the anchor at the end, the way that the, the regular expression should work um, is it should um, match every field. Um, because that dot star takes precedence over the value at the end. See what I mean? Every one of these is a match because even though this part of the expression is there, does not match an end of word character, because of the way the eagerness and the way that um, greediness works within a regular expression, this value here is the most important and it's going to match until it can't match any farther. And on every one of these fields, it matches all the way to the end of the record, at which point then the secondary part comes in, which is now I've matched everything at the end of the record. Yeah, at the end of the record, there are no non-word characters. So every field is a match. So you have to be really careful with regular expressions because the, that greediness and eagerness, which is a part of the expression process, um, gets you in trouble. And that's what those anchors or the alteration, the or statements, um, that's what those are useful for in order to put parameters to anchor content so that you can put scope um, on the expressions that you're writing. That's why that anchor has to be there. Without it, it doesn't work. All right, and I've got some example, the examples, I write them differently. So I'm making them up as I go along here. Uh, let's see here. I've got a list here of other ones I'm gonna look at. All right, so let's do, um, some of these are here. You, you can look at those examples. I've got other examples I've written out, but I wanna forget. All right, so let's do one um, specifically about case. So case is uh, tricky. So um, in this case, we have a 500 field where we have um, values that are upper and lower case. Uh, so inside of Mark Edit, um, there are um, shortcuts which allow you to change case. So let's say I wanted to change everything to capital initial. But this only works on fields that don't repeat. Because here, if I put this on a field that does repeat, it applies it to, um, oops, that obviously wasn't useful with the case I picked. Let me do that again. Let me pick one that's easy to see here. Maybe that will be easier to see. Okay, so we did this one. So title, initial case. So um, we can see that what it did um, wasn't just work on this field that had the uppercase data. It also 
process the data in all of the other fields that were 500s. And that might actually be problematic. Um, and in fact, it most likely is um, to be able to do that. And so if you want to isolate data, you're going to have to write a regular expression, um, particularly if you have data um, like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to isolate the process only to <clears throat> data that is in this particular field that's all capital case. Again, I could use the um, replace function or the edit field data. I'm going to go ahead and use the edit field data. I, in the example, I use the, this in the slides, I use the replace function. I'm going to use the edit field data just for purposes of scope. So I'm going to say 500. Um, I'm looking at the subfield A, so I'm going to go ahead and isolate that first because um, that's what I'm looking for. And actually, I want to capture the first character if it's um, uppercase, so A through Z. Um, and what that does is that means that's going to be the first thing that I capture because I want to keep it as uppercase and then I want to turn everything else lowercase. So I'm going to match um, everything that is A through Z um, and I'm going to include a, um, a uh, space because space is part of the values that are there. Um, I just have to put the range in A through Z and I'm going to match everything else to the end of the record. Um, and so now um, I use something in MarkEdit that uh, is how MarkEdit deals with some of the, the missing functionality um, in the .NET regular expression. So again, in the documentation, .NET um, doesn't have a, so in, if you're familiar with Perl or other regular expression languages, there's a way to change case really quickly. Uh, .NET doesn't provide that. So MarkEdit has um, a couple of functions that are built into the tool. One is uh, L case and U case, and that allows you to lowercase all the data captured in the group. So in this case, I would do dollar sign one to capture the subfield A and the first character. Um, L case, which is the function that's going to turn everything lowercase and put the group inside of it. And so now it should turn everything inside of group two into a lowercase process. I go ahead and run that. Um, 14 modifications are made. Don't worry, there aren't 14 modifications made. What actually is happening is counting the number of data elements that have been replaced. Um, so we turn the data from uppercase to lowercase and now the, the process works. So um, we have these case statements. Uh, again, there are um, written inside of the samples here. L case, U case, um, example of how L case, U case works. All right. go back to the field here. Let's say you wanted to split a field. So I have here an example of a um, 856 where I have um, two subfield views. Let's say I wanted to split on the subfield view and to create two separate fields. Um, in this case, I would probably end up using something like a replace function because it allows me to capture scope. So I want to capture the um, 856 and all the indicators because I want to reuse those. Subfield view, capture everything in the subfield view, and then I want to capture everything beyond it because that's going to be the sub second field. Uh, then I can go ahead and create my new fields uh, dollar sign one, dollar sign two, slash in, dollar sign one, dollar sign three. So that captures the first group, which is in the 856, um, the field information. The subfield U to the end of the subfield is in group two. The new line creates a new line. Um, and then I take the group three, which is everything after the subfield U, and use a regular expression, replace all. One modification is made because there should only be one field that meets that criteria, and that's this one here. So we create two fields out of that field that was created. So that allows me to um, uh, create those fields. Uh, let's say I wanted to uh, match on um, the data that's in the LDR, um, and I wanted to match on information here um, in this field, uh, but only if it's um, a, uh, a, B, or C, um, or E. Actually, we'll do it where it matches and doesn't match it. So um, inside of the tool, uh, I would use uh, LDR equals LDR, so I'm going to use the replace function. And here's where I um, use um, the, uh, the, the limited match notation. So where I'm, uh, the way I've been using it to capture the two spaces and the indicators, I'm going to use it to count out the number of values that I need to match in front of. Because I only care about this field here. So in mark, all of the control field values start counting at zero. In regular expressions, they count at one. 
So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to capture six characters plus the two spaces. So um, you can either do that like this, where you are very specific, saying it's two and six. So the two is the indicators, the six are the first values. If you want to um, separate them to make it a little easier to read, so you know that there's a difference there, or you could just say eight. And then after that, I'm going to capture a group that is uh, A, B, C, D, E, or maybe A, uh, C, E. We'll do that. Um, and then we'll leave the rest of them alone. Dollar sign one. Um, let's change that to A9, so it's easy to see. Oops. Um, dollar sign one. And let's change that to a nine, so it's easy to see. Replace regular expression and replace, and we see here that the E, because it was part of the ACE, um, gets replaced with a 9. Um, and that limiter there, the dot 8, allowed me to count off the variables that were there. So it makes it straightforward. <clears throat> Let's say I wanted to um, match cross multiple fields. So I talked about um, the multi line function which is uh, slightly terrifying. Um, so to make life easier um, for folks, um, mark edits replace function includes a conditional replace function, perform, find, and replace if. And it includes both an end string and a regular expression equivalent. Um, so what this does is this makes it so that unlike the multi-line evaluation, which requires you to not only capture and look for data inside of fields, but requires you to put it all back. Um, MarkEdit provides you with a way to perform those kind of conditional um, replacements where you're looking for data inside a field without having to um, re-put that data back. Essentially, this is just doing a find to decide whether or not um, you're going to do a replacement and then allows you to do the find and replace replacement either as a regular expression or not. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. So let's say I wanted to do a replacement, but only if um, the data in the 052 um, was uh, 450, um, the data in um, the uh, 700 has J in it, and the, uh, I don't know, um, uh, 500 has relief. So we're going to have three values that have to be met before the find and replace happens. So I can do that with a regular expression that uses multi-line. I would have to capture all of the data up to the, uh, five, uh, the 052 and then match the data in the 052 as a group. Um, I would then capture all the data down to um, the 500 field and I would match the relief that section. And then I would capture all the data down to the 700 field, and I would look for things that have J in them. And again, then I would capture the rest of the data, and then I would have to put it all back, making sure, or otherwise I would delete either parts or all of the record. The multi-replace function allows you to do this in, in as one operation, <laughs> excuse me, one operation, but without having to worry about putting all that data back. Um, because the data actually isn't scoped in the same way as if it's in a multi-line evaluation. So let's do it this way. So I'm going to say um, it has to match uh, an equal 050, uh, or sorry, equals 052.4. Um, so that's going to take my characters um, slash dollar sign A, and I want it to say for uh, 050. So that's the first, thing, first criteria. So I, it has to match that a space and uppercase. Um, and then I'm going to match the next part, which is it has to be an 050.4, uh, so field A, relief. Make sure I spelled that right. All right, perfect. All right, so that's the next part. And then and uh, space, and I'm going to say equals uh, 700, and I'm going to say uh, uh, and four, uh, and I want a slash subfield A, and I want it to um, have J in there, so dot star J star, and so that's my um, expression. Uh, and I haven't tried this yet, so I'm assuming this works. So the way that the um, perform find and replace function works, um, the uh, tool allows you to use ands and ors 
Um, it's space, uppercase, and, or space, uppercase, or space, to create um, uh, uh, large groups of, um, of expressions to match. So in this case, I've got all these. These are all regular expressions, so that's a regex. So that's the first criteria. And so the second criteria would be if all those things are met, then I want to change um, the uh, 090 Field A um, uh, from a uh, G to something else. So I'm going to put that there. Uh, and then I'm going to say uh, dollar sign one, dollar sign two, and uh, GW. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm, I'm going to have it um, match, do uh, change the, the 090 G to GW. Um, but only if all of those other criteria are matched. So I set the regular expression value here, I set the regular expression value here. This regular expression value captures the information in this space. This regular expression value captures the information in this space, and then I run replace, and one modification gets made, and we see that it's made here. So I could do that as a multi-line replacement, but it's a scary multi-line replacement um, because so much data is captured and evaluated. I can do this in a perform find and replace if um, by uh, isolating all of the conditionals that I need to search for um, inside the if statement and then using the replacement there. So it allows you to um, change the scope. The tool also provides the ability to use a not function, but it can only be used once and at the beginning. So let's say I wanted to use a not, I could say not, um, I don't know, um, equals uh, 049 so if it's not and then and. so if it's not if the 049 um, doesn't have BBB in it so that's the first statement and then the rest of those criteria are true then it'll go ahead and do the the function so you have actually quite a few options that are available to you in that perform find and replace if um, that allows you to um, do some fairly complicated replacements over multiple criteria, again, using regular expressions or not, mixing regular expressions with non-regular expressions without having to use the multi-line evaluation function. Um, in fact, the only time anymore that I recommend using the multi-line evaluation function is if you're actually evaluating multiple fields um, and doing replacements in multiple fields, because in that case, then it actually would be appropriate to be capturing multiple groups of information and then making those replacements based on. All right, example, example, functions, blah, blah, blah multi-line, um, talked about that. Uh, all right. Okay, so we're six minutes uh, till the end of what I had planned on um, my session. Um, so that was uh, very quickly kind of a talk about how some of this stuff works, really focusing on the scope. Uh, again, if you're looking about regular expressions, watch the first section, um, read the regular expression documentation, learn how to do the, um, the work that's in the, uh, the example, use the example uh, website, to kind of play around with how that works. Um, within Mark Edit, scope becomes very important, and I've tried to show today why that's important um, and how that's that's useful. Um, are there particular questions um, that have come up um, from doing this? I will pull this up in case there are. Um, related to how regular expressions get applied uh, within Mark Edit themselves, um, because again. Everything about how regular expressions works within market it comes down to um, the, the regular expressions themselves are actually somewhat regular, fairly easy to write because they're um, uh, they just follow a specific set of rules within mark edit where regular expressions become important is understanding how the scope um, gets applied to the records that you're working with so that way you understand how the regular expressions get applied and interpreted. Um, so that's really why I wanted to focus on how that, that part of it gets implemented within the application and where you can, um, where you can break that scope. Um, is there a list of shortcuts? So yeah, inside of the, the documentation pages, 
um, they're there. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think it's um, used to be that there was a health page that was uh, built into Mark Edit, but it got really difficult to um, maintain. Uh, it's either in the knowledge base, must be in the knowledge base. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't search the same way. I need to work on a better way of doing that. They're inside here. You just have to list through the older en entries, unfortunately. Um, I need to come up with a better way to search this part of it. But they're inside the knowledge base there, um, which is where they're there. Uh, it would, let's see, I'd find it helpful if there was an info bubble or something with a short description of the scopes and different tools. Um, yeah, I'd have to think about how I would put that in place. Um, I, I try to avoid a lot of built-in info stuff because then it gets to be very difficult to translate. So Mark Edit's translated right now into about 30 some odd different languages. The automated translation works really well for smaller sets gets a little bit harder um, with larger descriptive stuff, but I'll, I can take a look at how that might work. Um, if anything, I can at least uh, find some places where maybe inside, what I try and do is um, it might be useful. Um, so inside the, the tools help, um, for example, I try to include things here that help with finding stuff. I could see if maybe I could include some context in the help there um, that might be useful. Uh, can I talk a little bit about the regular expression store with Mark Edit? Is it, is there a way to save? So, so yes, yeah, so that's a good question. So um, you'll notice inside of the tool here um, that as I work, the tool saves regular expressions as I'm working on them. Um, so those are there. Um, but there is a tool that's called um, a regular expression store. Um, you find it, uh, tools, uh, regular expression store. Um, this is either a local or public um, tool. So um, I don't know if I have anything stored locally. In fact, I know I don't. So um, I don't have any local regular expressions um, on my development machine, but there's a public store. So these are um, regular expressions that people have contributed. Um, you can um, select a regular expression which shows um, an example of what um, it looks like, um, where it would show up, um, available applications depending on who's written it, um, and what the expression looks like, um, and then you have the action to save the expression which then pulls it into your local expression box. Um, if you make a change to it, you can check it and share that back to um, the regular expression store. Um, but this allows you then to be able to pull this up, um, copy the expression, um, and then take it to um, somewhere within the application. So you can reuse expressions over and over again and you can share them. Um, this tool was originally written for uh, local use. Um, it was actually for a number of, uh, we have a number of um, uh, catalogers who are older and looking towards retirement. Uh, they had a lot of regular expressions that they were using within their um, uh, best practices. And we're looking for ways to be able to capture those um, and be able to provide them to um, uh, the people that we're going to be working next. Um, and so the, the regular expression store was really designed originally as a way to um, allow folks to do that uh, locally. Um, but there is the public component so that you can save those um, forward um, so that other people can download them. There was a version of Mark Edit. So if you're not using the most current where the regular expression store um, uh, wasn't working. Um, the, the, the search of the public instance, it happened right around the first of the year um, because I had uh, migrated the website um, and there was uh, some, some pages that didn't get moved, um, but uh, it should all be resolved. And so it should be that that stuff works the way it's supposed to now. Um, so that's what the regular expression store is within Mark Edit. Um, let's see here. Um, all the webinars are on my um, um, are on my YouTube channel. Uh, so you'll just have to find them there. You can find them on the website uh, under tutorials. There's a place where it'll pull the stuff from the from YouTube, but the 
easiest way to find them is to go to the YouTube channel and there's a playlist specifically for all of these particular webinars put in place. Um, can you provide a regular expression for deleting 600s with a second indicator or four, but the first indicator can be a zero or one? Sure. Um, so that's actually pretty straightforward. Um, uh, again, um, it goes back to scope. So the tool in the delete field function, um, we would look at, uh, we didn't, if we we're looking at all 600s, we would use 6xx that scopes the um, the fields that are evaluated by the regular expression to everything that's in a 6xx block. Um, and then I have to account for the 600s here. So 600 field, um, the two uh, blank spaces. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a space here and th that way it makes it more straightforward. We, we understand that's what we're looking at, a space, two spaces. Um, if you didn't care about um, that, you could also just do this. Um, that would be six plus the next four characters. Um, so that would be the two, um, six, it would be the, the two, uh, 10 and uh, single digit plus the two spaces. So that captures the um, uh, 600 part. And then we would look at the indicators where first indicator can be a zero slash or one. So we would put those as a group, so zero, um, one or um, a slash, you have to use uh, two slashes because a slash is a special character. So you have to escape it, so a double slash. So that's gonna be um, any 600 character where the first indicator is zero, one, or blank. Um, and the second indicator, you can either use it like that or like that is four. So that's the expression that I would use. Um, and then I would check it. Um, and that would capture anything in a 600 field um, where the first indicator is zero, one, or blank, and the second indicator is a four. And then that would allow me to then just hit the delete function and delete all of the 600s inside that category. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, so like, is, if there's no other questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording.